Everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we have a clean 2010 Toyota Prius in the shop. It has 230,000 miles. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, and the customer complaint is he has a problem with his brakes. So the problem is he can hear this brake booster pump actuating like every 15 seconds. Every time he presses the brake pedal, and even when he's driving, this thing is going like, bzzz, you know, every 15 seconds. So he's like, yeah, something's messed up. He wants it diagnosed and repaired. <clears throat> so this is where, <laughs> you know, a hybrid, right? It gets, what, 45, 50 miles per gallon. Fantastic. He's gotten 230,000 miles out of it. Pretty much problem free. Can't complain about that. However, to keep these cars on the road long term, you know, no matter how uh, reliable and quality built they are, the systems are significantly more complicated than on a regular, you know, simpler car like a Toyota Corolla. And that means that when stuff breaks, it's going to be expensive. Uh, great example here. So the brakes, on a regular car, you just have a vacuum you know, from your intake manifold going to your uh, assist, you know, the booster, regular master cylinder, maybe an ABS module. On this thing, uh, it's very, very different. So, again, it's, it's crammed in here, but you can see here's the brake fluid reservoir. It has three hoses attached to it. One of them goes down to uh, this brake booster pump. You can see the yellow sticker on it. It's a motor and a pump that pressurizes fluid in an accumulator and that goes to the ABS module slash booster unit which is attached to the firewall there. And the problem is the actual um, actuator assembly, the ABS module, develops an internal leak. So the pump pumps it up and then it bleeds off on its own pretty quickly and the pump has to re, you know, replenish that pressure too often. So that obviously leads to the pump failing eventually and you losing your brakes. Now, what's the fix? Well, <laughs> you have to replace the actuator. That's not serviceable. It's very fancy. It has valves. It has like nitrogen pressure, whatever, reservoir in it. Also, the pump, if that's been pumping so much, uh, you want to replace that as well. So if you go to the dealership, your quote, the parts alone are about like 700 bucks for the actuator, the ABS module, 700 bucks for the pump, you know, the booster pump assembly. It's at least a six hour job. The bleeding procedure is fancy. You have to use a scanner. Uh, it takes about an hour. So you're looking at like at over two grand, probably three grand at the dealership. The customer here opted for some used parts from a lower mileage Prius. So this is the actual ABS module slash booster assembly. That's probably, I think that's called a, a stroke simulator. You see the bleed plug there. I mean, this thing is fancy. And then here is a replacement pump assembly. There's a motor, an accumulator, and then the line goes to our actuator. So, um, let's see what this car does, uh, you know, just verify the customer complaint. And <clears throat> I also want to show you, uh, there's a recall on early 2010 Priuses that deal with this problem. So, here. So, here's the recall. We have our vehicle pulled up on all data. Uh, certain 2010 model year Prius and it says the subject vehicles are equipped with brake booster pump assembly which can develop a crack inside the accumulator housing if this occurs nitrogen gas could leak into the brake fluid and gradually cause loss of power assist under certain circumstances this could affect stopping distance and increase the risk of a crash oh, yeah definitely so Toyota would replace the brake booster pump assembly no charge to the vehicle owner and uh, in certain cases, if this DTC is set, so the nitrogen got into the actual, you know, the 
guess they call it the brake booster assembly, you also replace that. So those are the two parts we're replacing today. And uh, you know they only they cover certain certain VINs here. Now our VIN is later, so it would not be covered by this recall. However, the replacement actuator that he got on wherever eBay from a junkyard, this VIN does fall into the uh, recall, you know, uh, range. So I. In this case, you have to be very clear with the customer. I'm just installing your parts. It may or may not fix the problem. This pump is actually, you know, from a recalled vehicle. So, hey, no guarantees. Uh, we're just doing the labor, bleeding the system, and it could potentially be a waste of money for the customer. So, if you have the money, buy the new parts, install the new parts, pay the, you know, whatever, two grand, so <laughs> that's kind of the question. All that fuel, all those fuel savings that you had getting like 45 instead of 35 miles per gallon. Well, here they are in this repair. So that's the hidden cost of hybrid ownership. That the other systems are not the same as a regular car. They're probably much more complicated and expensive to repair. And you will have to repair them down the road, even over 200,000 miles. That's just the way it is. So before we tear anything apart, I'll, let, I'll show you the symptoms. So you open the driver's door, you can hear that pump pumping from like zero PSI all the way up. That's way too long. It should be only you know a few seconds on a good system. Now if we just turn the power button on here, if you push the brake pedal, you'll hear the pump actuate. That's not supposed to happen. That means it's bleeding off way too quickly. And then you can hear this hissing sound. That's the actual internal leak returning the fluid to the reservoir. If we look carefully, you'll see this fluid level slowly rise. And when the pump actuates again, you'll see it slowly fall. So let's wait a few seconds. Oh, there it goes. You see the level dropping? And then it's going to come back up to the bottom of that little arrow. And this will repeat indefinitely. You hear that hissing sound. So the leak is, with a stethoscope, you can actually hear the hissing inside of the ABS module. So let's, uh, let's get to the replacement here. It's going to take all day. I want to switch to the Think Tool Pros, and this one can read <laughs> the trouble codes. Not exactly sure what the deal was with the uh, Platinum S10. Accumulator sensor. Just grab that. But sometimes it holds steady. There you can hear the hiss, it's decreasing. There must be some bad worn out seal in there that lets the pressure decay. So let's see the cycle time is 30 seconds, 35, 40, 45, 50. So it might take about 30 seconds to uh, cycle here. Very cool. So let's follow this uh, procedure very carefully since this is a complicated system. 
Uh, brake booster removal. So we got to remove floorboard, floor box, floorboard. So to disable this brake control system, uh, you basically turn the switch off and you can't press the pedal or open the driver's door until the reservoir switch is disconnected and then disconnect the cable from the negative battery terminal depress the brake pedal 40 times or more and return all the fluid accumulator back to the reservoir check that the parking brake the brake pedal cannot be further depressed release the parking brake alright let's let's do that so the battery is back here in the trunk on the right side and you can see it's swimming in a pool of water that's probably not good but let's depress the brake pedal 40 times there we go it's getting hard next thing I want to do is just drain all the fluid out of this reservoir and to do that just pop off the lower hose and put a little cup under it and it might take a few cupfuls oh no don't overfill otherwise you're gonna spill stuff oh yeah it's a little full so I popped out one of the little rubber plugs in the back by the battery and uh, there's quite the waterfall here. So I think we'll just leave that out. Alright, this Prius is pissing me off a little bit. I thought I could shortcut the procedure not removing the wipers and this cowl and everything. But to remove this bracket for the power steering reservoir, um, <laughs> there's one screw or bolt can see in the mirror right there it comes from the top it comes from this way not a nut from the bottom ridiculous so we have to take off the wipers Ugh. all right so we're here and I'm thinking it just might be easier to remove this entire mess it's hold, held down by a bunch of screws but that way we'll have a uh, much better working room All right, well, here we go. What a ridiculous design. Oh, man, this is going to clear. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> we can actually see our prize now. It's already ended the two strut. So this is free. We just gotta disconnect the hoses and uh, all these brake lines and the brake pedal and this connector. Is that? And I guess we'll bleed the brakes because the bleed nipple is here and the procedure with the scanner you have to bleed each wheel and this uh, it's called a stroke simulator ooh so coming in from the driver's footwell area you got the brake pedal disconnected from the levers just a pin and then four nuts holding the whole assembly to the firewall so four nuts and a pin and we're getting pretty close. So we've got to disconnect five brake lines. And this thing is, it's free. It's ready to come out of here. So one, two, three, four, and then five right here. Got a little catch pail and uh, I'll get this thing out of here. All right, here we go. I'm gonna hold this whole mess out of the way and try to extract this unit. A little tight. I think we'll, I should have enough room to pop out of here. There. 
there we go. So not too bad. Let's put the new one in and try that bleeding procedure. I'm not going to touch that pump. The pump is still fine. The leak is actually internal. So basically, I want to remove all these uh, cutoff lines here, and we'll slap this sucker in. Alrighty, so brake lines are connected, reservoir is connected. Let's fill it up with fresh DOT3 synthetic brake fluid. This thing will take probably at least a quart. Maximum, we'll fill it up to uh, close to the maximum mark. You can see it's a it's like a triple reservoir. All right, now reconnect the negative battery terminal. We gotta lift the car and bleed the whole system. That should be fun. All right, battery terminal is reconnected. I'm gonna throw a charger on it. So I don't know how long this bleeding procedure is gonna take, but you would think the hybrid would be smart enough to charge up its own little auxiliary battery using the big battery, but I don't think they do that. We're at 11.8 right now, 12.2, 12.3. So there's a 10 amp charger, should be plenty of uh, charge to keep us keep us going here. Let's plug in the scanner and follow the OEM instructions. All right, brake bleeding. Tech stream must be used for air bleeding. If not used, the air bleeding will be incomplete. Yep. Read all this stuff. Maintain your fluid level, obviously. Lease the parking brake while the linear valve offset calibration procedure. So you need to apply the parking brake. Okay, fine. Uh, um, bleed brake line, bleed brake system. So that's what we did. Usual air bleeding. So basically we just go into the scanner and follow the instructions. See bleed brake system. Oh bleed brake line. This is bleed brake system. Disconnect the reservoir level switch connector. Okay. This procedure is not required the reservoir level switch connector has been disconnected. <laughs> Thanks. Remove the brake master cylinder reservoir cap assembly, add brake fluid, turn the tech stream on, ABS actuator has been replaced. Before following the instruction of the tech stream to perform linear valve offset calibration and release the parking brake. When calibration is complete, immediately apply the parking brake. So that should be pretty straightforward. Alright, so with the level sensor disconnected, I'm assuming it just won't run the pump when you open the door. Let's see. It does. Well, I guess it reaches pressure. That's good. <laughs> Let's uh, plug in the scanner and do this bleeding procedure. Well, the good news so far is we don't hear that hissing sound and we're, uh, the pump's not cycling so I assume that's already promising. So this is the older one. Well, let's go right into our ABS. And special function. Alright, here we go. Air bleeding. 
Okay. ABS actuator has been replaced. Vehicle stop, parking brake applied. Yep, switch is on, ready, off. Reservoir level switch is disconnected. Yes. Loosen the bleeder plug of the right rear wheel with the brake pedal held down. Hold the brake pedal until all the air in the fluid is completely bled out. When all the air in the fluid is completely out, tighten the bleeder plug and release the brake pedal. Press OK to proceed. All right, well, uh, I guess uh, I only have one leg here, so we'll install a snow brush to depress the pedal and watch that fluid. All right, right rear wheel. Got our bleeder connected. Bleeder plug is loose. Let's, uh, let's see what happens when we depress the brake pedal. Now we can put it. I'll pivot the mirror down so we can see our bleeding apparatus hopefully. So depressed brake pedal. Okay, let's see. Yes, we have brake fluid. Filled it up to about there, so let's tighten that guy. And I guess we move on to the next wheel. Okay, press OK to proceed. Rear left wheel. Same procedure. All right, so push down the brake pedal. Well, there's some bubbles in there. Okay, that looks good. All right, depress the brake pedal several times. Loosen the bleeder plug of the front left wheel with the brake pedal held down. After fluid bleeding stops, tighten the bleeder plug of the front left wheel and release the brake pedal. Repeat steps one to three above until all the air old fluid stops coming out. Okay, so we'll keep this thing depressed. We'll move the seat forward. Hose right here. Get the appropriate wrench. <laughs> this is an eight millimeter. The rears are the tens. Let's see here. So Repeat one to three. Is that getting fluid? Yeah, I think so. Let's do that a few more times. Topped off the reservoir there. Let's move on to the front left wheel. Press the brake pedal several times. Now let's depress it with our snow brush and loosen the plug. Now we gotta just pump the brake pedal a few times. Looks good to me. So each time we bleed about half a cup of fluid out. Make sure that's see 
low drip. So I don't think you can do gravity bleed in these, but let's continue. All right, press OK to proceed. Perform stroke simulator air bleeding procedure. After pressing OK button, perform the following operations. Bleed air from the stroke simulator. Bleed, bleed the air from the front left wheel. Bleed air from the front right wheel. No, perform the operations within 30 minutes. Press OK to begin air bleed procedure. The so stroke simulator, let's go there. To press the brake pedal several times, losing the bleed plug of the simulator, the brake pedal held down. After fluid bleeding stops, tighten the bleeder plug simulator, release the brake pedal steps one to three until the air stops coming out. All right, so. It is definitely building pressure. So let's hold that down. And loosen the stroke on our, loosen the bleed nipple on our stroke simulator. Okay. You see any fluid coming out of there? There we go, yep. Yep, it's filling the little cup. I think it should be good. Okay. Yep, so we got nice clean brake fluid there. Tighten that up, and press OK to proceed. Now the front left wheel, with the brake pedal held down, hold the brake pedal until all the fluids bled out. Okay, so now when I release the bleed nipple, the pump automatically starts pumping then raises up to the appropriate pressure. Okay, so that's, and the brake pedal is held, held down by the uh, snow brush. So let's empty this out, and then uh, go to the right front wheel. All right, so left front wheel, we'll loosen this. The pump should activate, and see how fast that's filling up. So we're good, I don't see any more air. Man, it this sure goes through a lot of brake fluid just for a bleeding procedure. But you gotta do what you gotta do. Tighten this guy down and let's, uh, let's see what's next on the scanner. All right, so we'll release the brake pedal. Press okay to proceed. Okay, so we bled the simulator. I don't know what it's doing there. Wait for 90 seconds. <laughs> Man. Fun times, huh? So it's gotta be bleeding, I don't know, the solenoids or something. It tells me to bleed each wheel again. That's gonna be a waste of brake fluid. All right, here we go. The next screen lower the accumulator pressure. Pressure drop process takes approximately 10 seconds. Okay. Press okay after the ABS pump motor stops. And it stopped, 
So press OK. Next screen lower accumulator pressure. Pressure <laughs> drop takes approximately 10 seconds. <laughs> this is funny. So I think you'll we'll do this six times or something. You see the brake fluid level is dropping in our reservoir. Okay. And then it'll do it again. Watch that fluid level rise up. Yep. Good time to check for leaks. I don't see any leaks. Okay. Okay. This is hilarious. Four out, four out of six. But we know the pressure's holding and there's no uh, hissing anymore. So we replace the right part and hopefully this thing will keep working for a while longer. All right, it said, please refill the reservoir to the max line. Well, it's already at the max since the accumulator pressure has been released. Press OK to proceed. Okay, so this is almost it. After the ABS pump motor stops, turn the power switch off and then reconnect the reservoir level switch. So, turn this off. Reconnect our level switch. Press OK to proceed. Turn the power switch on. Release the parking brake. Press OK to execute the linear valve offset calibration procedure. So, it's on. Release the parking brake. Does it say ready? Press OK, execute linear valve offset calibration procedure. OK. Brake warning light should be blink blinking slowly. Calibration procedure is complete. Yeah, EBS light's blinking. Everything's blinking. Ah. When the calibration procedure is complete, the brake warning light will blink quickly. Please apply a parking brake when the brake warning light starts blinking quickly. Okay. Press OK to proceed. Air bleeding is complete. Please wait for 10 seconds. I guess that's it. So we can power it off. Okay. So let's just um, check for any fault codes. Okay, clear DTC, yes. No DTCs. Let's go back to live data and look at that um, accumulator pressure uh, accumulator sensor. Okay. 3.57. Let's graph it. So if I press the brake pedal, That's cool. So obviously it's rock steady. We fixed the problem. It's not dropping. And that's it.
So we'll uh, put the wheels back on, take it for a spin. Problems fixed, should be a happy customer. His eBay part worked. But man, these hybrids, you definitely need computers to fight computers. And procedures are a lot more involved, take a lot longer, parts are a lot more expensive. So consider that when buying a, when buying a hybrid. But hey, you get great gas mileage and this thing, 230,000 miles, uh, you can't complain about that. Toyota does make a quality product. So no car is perfect, but some cars uh, require less maintenance than others. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. So full coat scan, we've got a clean bill of health. Let's uh, turn the car off for now. Reinstall the windshield wipers, and this is a lot easier if you just unscrew the four long bolts that hold the whole wiper assembly down. And then you just come in here and buzz all the all righty so when we open the door we don't get the priming sound of the pump that's cool press the brake It sounds for a few seconds. That's how it's supposed to work. I like it. Let's see how she drives and how she stops. Yay! <laughs> stops on a dime. I think the brake pedal feel is even better than before with no leaks. Cool. Well, let's see how many more miles you can get out of this thing. Thanks all for watching. We'll see you next time.